Insurance agents from around the world, welcome to the Insurance Guys podcast, hosted by yours truly, Scott Howell, and the incomparable Bradley Flowers. For agents, by agents, we're here to share real-life experiences, tips, and insights related to all aspects of both being an insurance agent and running a successful agency. So sit back, turn up the volume, and let's get down to business. Insurance agents from around the world, welcome to the Insurance Guys podcast. I am your fearless host, Scott Howell, insurance agent and insurance evangelist based out of Huntsville, Alabama, and you are listening to the Insurance Guys podcast. I am joined today by my fearless co-host, All-American, first team All-American, rivals, five-star recruit, Six foot three sophomore from Sarah Land, Alabama. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the incomparable Bradley Flowers. How are you, Bradley? I'm great, Scott. How are you doing? Man, I am doing fantastic. Guys, I am fired up to be in Mobile, Alabama today. Been down here all week, and I'm really looking forward and excited about our next guest. We have with us not only an author, not only an economist, but more importantly, especially for you insurance agents out there, a retirement expert. He's delivered over 5,000 seminars on his signature book, Paychecks to Playchecks, which I have actually read. And he's been featured on Business, Forbes, many other publications out there. And, and really, honestly, Bradley, considered by a whole bunch of people the retirement income expert. I know in the world of insurance and insurance agents, this guy is a name that most people out there know. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the other incomparable co-host of today's show, Mr. Tom Hegna. Tom, how are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks, guys. Man, thank you for being on the show. As I was saying off air, you know, I've sat through one of your seminars, and I am so excited and proud and humbled to have you on the show today, and I just wanted to start by saying that. Thank you very much. Yeah, no question. So let's get into it. Now, Tom, let's back up for just one second, and I know we don't have a ton of time today. Tell us what you've, been, what you've got going on right now, what you've been doing the last few weeks. Well, I mean, the last few weeks I've been traveling like normal, yeah. uh, like crazy man. I've been on the road probably 14, the last 18 days, 13 different hotel rooms. So wow. I mean, that's what I do. But I, I, I'm traveling the country and the world trying to pe- help people retire happy and successful, how to never run out of money, how to get the most from the least. And what I talk about is all based in math and science. It's not my opinions. And so it's it's pretty hard to refute the facts. And, and that's what I lay out is you can have an optimal retirement if you just do a few steps different than most people. Cool. Let's just jump into that. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I mean, step number one, you got to have a plan. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you get anywhere if you don't have a roadmap or a plan of how to get there? And with that, you You've got to work with a financial professional. Retirement is not a do-it-yourself project. You need to learn to understand and maximize your Social Security benefits because for most people, Social Security is the largest retirement asset they have. People should consider a hybrid retirement. That means maybe working a couple extra years Mm part-time. Any extra revenue they can bring into their retirement equation can help them. They've got to have a plan to protect themselves against inflation. They need to have a base level of guaranteed lifetime income that'll make them happier and that they'll never run out of money if they do that. They need have a plan for long-term care, which most people don't have, and use their home equity wisely and then use life insurance as the most efficient way to pass wealth to children, grandchildren, and charities. And if if they would really follow those simple steps, everybody could have a better retirement than if they don't follow those steps. Absolutely. So Tom, let me explain, and I think you're probably already probably already know this, but our mission on this podcast is to help insurance agents any way that we can whether it's in sales, in the business side of their of their agency. And in this particular case, having you on this particular podcast, I think we, we really want to focus on life insurance sales from the agency standpoint, getting these agents out there and selling more life insurance and annuities and financial products. What is the one thing from the agency standpoint, the insurance agent standpoint, that you see is probably the biggest hurdle that you see most men and women have that are actual insurance agents in terms of getting out there and selling more, whether it's term, whole life, annuities, whatever it may be? What do you see as the biggest hurdle for those guys? I don't think they're getting in front of enough people every day. Okay. You know? 
there's a very simple business. It's not an easy business, but a very simple business. You know, if you get in front of one person face to face every day, you're going to make about fifty thousand dollars in this business. Mm-hmm. If you can get in front of two people face to face, you're going to make a hundred thousand. If you can get in front of three people face to face every day, you're going to make over one hundred fifty thousand. And and I can just keep going up. If you meet five people every day face to face, you're going to make two hundred fifty thousand. It's it's a pretty simple business, and those numbers have proved pretty true for my whole thirty years in this business. But you got agents out there meeting like two or three people a week. Right. Well, you're not, you're not going to make it in this business sitting down with two or three people a week. I'd right. rather change tires for a discount tire, you know? Right. Absolutely. And you just, you just walked into question number two. Question number two I had for you today. And agents, if you sell life insurance, if you work for a company or you want to make more money in terms of your disposable income, I will tell everybody out there right now, one of the biggest failures of my career right now is not focusing my attention more on on life and financial services. And if I don't start doing it more, I'm 46 years old right now. If I do not start doing more of it, it will it will literally be the biggest failure of my career. Bar none, no second place finisher. But with that said, question number two on that topic. So what is the secret formula, the secret sauce, Tom, for life and financial services people to get those folks that you need to get in front of every day? What's that secret formula for getting in front of them? Well, I mean, that's the million dollar question in this business, you know, and, and to the advisors who are doing some property and casualty, they, they typically do get in front of a lot of people every week. But if, if you're just focused on financial services, just life insurance, it's a little more difficult. And it's different today than when I was an advisor. I used to use bulk mail and follow up with phone calls and all of that. And, and that's probably a little less effective, but you've got tools that are even cheaper and better now with social media. And I would just tell people, build your funnels as big as you can, mm-hmm. get as many connections connections as you can, because the more people that you're connected to with LinkedIn and Facebook, the more prospects that you potentially have. And then you can you can also watch. It's not just posting. It's watching and listening Mm -hmm. and, and seeing that somebody just had a baby. They just got married. They just moved. Somebody died. Those are all life events and people are much more likely to buy when there's life events than when when there aren't life events. Right. So we've gotten in front of somebody, we've made the connection, we've scheduled the appointment, which I know is hard to to get people in front of you that way, but we've done it. Or we're starting our fact-finding mission to figure out what somebody's needs are. How do you normally start that process in terms of just figuring out what exactly it is that they need? That's why I talk about this is a words business. It's a language business. It's a questions business and it's a stories business. And, right. and that's where the questions come in. And, and I tell agents all the time, if you want to increase your production, ask more questions, ask better questions. And I'll tell you, there's a book out there, man on a mission by Mar Feldman. And that book is loaded with great life insurance questions. So if you're, if you're having trouble with questions and then, you know, I've got some books, my, my second book, retirement income masters. What I did there is I went around the country. I found 14, top producers and each chapter is their story Mm -hmm. and that book is loaded with their questions what do they ask Mm -hmm. and and there's some great questions and you got to dig deeper but if you ask enough questions they will literally tell you what they want and what they need there shouldn't be any surprise if you ask the right questions it'll all become apparent hey so tom bradley here give us give us an example of a couple of those questions that you would recommend to an agent who is maybe struggling getting over that hump of asking those kind of questions well i mean just little things like what do you know about life insurance? Where did you learn about life insurance? What are your feelings around term insurance? What are your feelings around cash value life insurance? If you were killed by a drunk driver tomorrow, how much would your family sue for? I mean, there are questions out there that are great questions you can ask. If life insurance was free, how much would you want? Oh, as much as I could get. Great. Let's apply for that. There's there's a lot of questions that need to be asked and then some education. You know, people have no idea how underinsured they are for life insurance. Mm-hmm. And and so you've got to demonstrate to them how many millions they need. And I, too many advisors are selling $100,000 term policies. We got to get away from that. We need to sell in units. We sell them in 1 million, 2 million, 5 million. How many units would you like? Certainly. Term is cheap for a reason. They're supposed to buy a bunch of it, and we're supposed to sell a bunch of it. That sales cycle from appointment to close, what does that typically look like for anyone that you're training or for yourself or anyone you may know that takes the $1 million, $2 million, $5 million approach? Because I do write a lot of life insurance, but one thing I think I am 100% guilty of 
is sometimes taking the easy sale and not necessarily protecting that client to the absolute umpteenth degree and taking, you see what I mean? Taking yeah. that approach. More or less, yeah. the customer comes in and says, well, just give me 250000 Okay, right. buying signal, we're going to write it. Where in reality, yeah. if we took the, you know, $5 million for every 50000 in income that you preach about, which I 100% believe in and have actually posted about, that person would need a lot more money. I'm, I'm fortunate that, you know, the area that I, my office is in, I, we have more $100,000 earners per capita than anyone else, anywhere else in the state. So we have some folks that make a, a good amount of money and would need $10 million going by that formula. So what does that sales cycle look like versus the other way around? Well, I think that's where every person has to find a, a system that is comfortable for them. But, you know, when I was brand new, I was always taught to do a one appointment sales thing. And well, that's when you're a product pusher. You do one appointment and you close. But I think if you really want to do what's best for the client, you got to take at least two or three, sometimes like four appointments mm-hmm. to, to really move the process along and have more of a process and we're, than worrying about just pushing a product. And so, you know, the first process would be asking a lot of questions, getting a full idea. Uh, and I mean, not just a normal, you know, fact finder, but digging in a little deeper and asking about their kids and asking about their job and are they happy and what, are, what you know, what are their plans for retirement? What does retirement look like for them? And so that you can get a full picture of their whole situation. And then once you have that, then you can come back with solutions and there might be a training step in there. You know, you might have to do some training and lay the groundwork before you make your final presentation. I had a life financial services guy and he's uber successful, but he told me one time and this, this goes back to what Bradley just mentioned earlier. He said, you can't just pick the low hanging fruit. You've got to ask enough questions, get up in the tree with them and, and ask enough questions to really be able to help them. The more questions you ask, typically the bigger the fruit's going to get as you get up in that tree. And I think that speaks to what Bradley said. I think a lot of agents, they just do the whole, well, yeah, you want 250,000? We, you know, we can do 250,000. And then they, they just kind of run with that. And that's what they, that's what they give the client. And sometimes that may not be what's best for them and I just think that's an area that a lot of people myself included could really improve on yeah and again you know when you're a brand new advisor you know you're trying to survive you're going to probably write some business but when you're an established advisor you should really be spending that all that extra time that you can to do the right thing for the person and not just push a product and really get the family covered properly now they're not all going to buy it but but you'll sure. probably write a bigger policy if you, if you come in with a million they're probably going to buy more than if you come in with 250,000, you know right. what I mean? Or if you come right. in with 3 million, they're going to end up buying more than what they would have thought otherwise. And, and you've got to show them why in this low interest rate environment, a million dollars sounds like a lot, but in a 1% interest rate environment, that's $10,000 a year. Sure. In a 3% interest rate environment, that's that's 30,000 a year. That's nothing, you know, and people have two, 300,000, that's nothing. That's, mm-hmm. you know, that's two, three, four, five thousand a year in income. That's sure. inadequate. No family can live on that. Absolutely. So, Tom, on that note, tell the story that you told at NAFA a few years ago about your son's friend's mom. Yeah. So, I mean, and it's a true story. And kind of to set it up, I'd left my house. I was gone for 13 straight days because I was gone all week. And then I spoke at MDRT in Philadelphia over the weekend. I was gone for the next week. So I was gone for 13 straight days. I come home for one day a Saturday and I, I leave the next day for six more days. So out of a 10, 20 day stretch, I'm, I'm gone 19 out of 20 days. So you can imagine what that Saturday looked like. First of all, I was exhausted. Second of all, I had to do expenses for two weeks. Third, I get ready to leave the next day. And fourth, I got a wife and four kids. that want to see their dad every once in a while. Well, a couple days before I got home, my oldest son, Ryan, gave me a call and he said, Dad, my best friend's brother died three weeks ago and the widow, his wife, just got the check and it's a big check and she wants to meet with you on Saturday. And I said, Ryan, why does she want to meet with me? I don't do any more personal production. I'm a speaker, author, full time. And he, and he said, well, that's why she wants to meet with you because she knows you know this stuff and you're not going to try to sell her anything. And I said, well, Ryan, I've been gone for 13 days. I'm leaving for six days. I'm not going to take my one day off and and drive around the valley looking for some woman. But I said, here's what I'll do. If they want to come to my house, I'll meet with them on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Well, guess what? The widow, the dad, and the brother come to my house. They sat at my dining room table. She was 42 years of age, two little girls, husband killed unexpectedly, a $1 million death claim. And after I gave her my condolences, she said these words to me. She said, Tom, I never thought I'd be a millionaire. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to build a custom house on a lake with a place for my daughters to play. And I said, well, look, ma'am, time out. 
you, you only have one million dollars in a one percent interest rate environment. That's only ten thousand dollars a year. There's no custom houses at ten thousand dollars a year, especially even if you could get three percent or three and a half percent max, you could get thirty eight thousand dollars a year on a one million dollar death claim. There's no custom houses at thirty eight thousand dollars a year. Well, she was shocked. What are you talking about? My husband made $250,000 a year. I can't live on $38,000 a year. Well, if somebody's making $250,000 a year, they better have $5 million worth of life insurance. We could have a different conversation. So anyway, I, I just think people have no idea how far underinsured they are. Tom, I want to ask you, I know you don't have much time left. There's a couple things I want to go over. And I want to go back to something you asked earlier. The, when you said we sell in units, talk a little bit more about that. That is not something that I'm real familiar with. Bradley mentioned it right before we got on the podcast, but I'm, I'm intrigued by that. I think a lot of agents would be intrigued by that. Like I say, term is cheap for a reason. They're supposed to buy a bunch of it. We're supposed to sell a bunch of it. So we sell term in units, 1 million, 2 million, 5 million. How many units would you like? Because you got to get the people thinking bigger than the $200,000, 250000 or 500000 That is inadequate. They need 3 million. They need 4 million. They need 5 million. All right. And, and it's yet people just don't understand how much life insurance you really need in a low interest rate environment. They just have no idea. And so there it has to be an educational part in there. But, you know, you've got to put it into words that they understand. Like I always say there's four questions your spouse is going to ask on the day you die. And it's not going to be do we have term life or whole life or index life. It's going to be it's going to be how much life insurance do we have? How long will the dollars last? Can we stay in our same house and can the kids go to the same school? And so some of the power phrases you could use is right now, if one of you were to die, you would not be able to remain in your house and you would not be able to, your kids would not be able to go to the same school. Are you okay with that? And most people say, no, we're not okay with that. What do we got to do to fix that? And then you got to show them how they can fix that. So Tom, if I had to ask you one question, it would be this. What separates the MDRT agents from everybody else? Honestly, I think a couple of things. Number one, they see more people. They're, an MDRT agent is not seeing a, one, or, one or two people a week. They're seeing, you know, three or four or five people a day. Okay, that's number one, activity. They have higher levels of activity. Number two, they are students of the business. They study. They learn. They learn the words and language of other top producers. They don't try to wing it. They don't try to reinvent the wheel. They, they learn things that are working and they implement them. See, a lot of people, they go to meetings they, and they listen, they never take notes, they don't ever implement. And, and so you've got to be a student of the business. You've got to learn from others and then you've got to see more people and you've got to be powerful in the house. You've got to be, you, you, you know, they are depending on you to, to show them the right products that they ought to own and how much. And yet too many people are afraid to tell these people what they really need. I love that so much. I wish I could have all that tattooed on my forehead. Let's talk a little bit about annuities. I love annuities. I should sell more annuities. Nationwide has great products. I'm a nationwide principal agent. Let's talk a little bit about annuities. Tom, is there any certain demographic I need to be going after to sell more, more annuities in my in my agency in terms of age group, income level, those types of things? 50, 50 to 75 is the sweet zone, sweet spot. But I mean, you, you know, people younger than that can buy annuities if it's for retirement. And certainly people older than that can buy income annuities that have very high payout rates. But 50 to 75 people who are in or near retirement are the people who need to have a portion of their assets in an annuity. Now, this isn't my opinion. These are mathematical, scientific and economic facts. And I have to work with a lot of advisors. They're like, you know, CFPs and they're, and they think they're so fancy and, Oh, I don't do annuities. Annuities are bad. And I say, well, look, let me prove to you that you're wrong. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to build the portfolio that you think I cannot beat. Yeah. You put all the good stocks in there, put the alpha, the beta, the low standard, you build that portfolio that you think I cannot beat. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reach into that portfolio. I'm going to remove some of the bonds. I'm going to replace them with a lifetime income annuity. Do you know what that'll do to every single one of your portfolios? It'll lower the risk and increase the returns. Now, if an annuity was bad, it couldn't do that, okay? And so I can beat anybody's portfolio that thinks that they are smarter, that they don't need an annuity. I will show them that by adding an annuity, they will lower the risk and increase the return. So this is math and science. So we've got to as advisors, we got to learn this stuff. We got to learn the math and science so that we can handle the objections of people who are not educated, who say annuities are bad or whatever. They're, they're ignorant and we've got to correct the ignorance that's out there. 
That is fantastic. I could tell you are very passionate about that. So when you go out to speak at these uh, these different places and seminars and things, is it annuities that you're talking about, or are you just talking about overall financial? I know when I, I know when I went to see you, it was specific to annuities. I'm pretty sure it was, but you know most of the speaking engagements you do, what are you talking about? Now, I'm talking about an optimal retirement. So okay. annuities play a role in that. Right. Long-term care insurance plays a role in that. And life insurance plays a role in, role in that. And investments can play a role in that as an mm-hmm. inflation hedge and right. growth. So it's not, should, should you be in mutual funds or should you be in annuities or should you have life insurance or should you have long-term care? The answer is yes. You need to have right. all of them. Right. Because that that is what will lead to an optimal retirement. And the people who say, oh, don't buy annuities or don't buy long-term care, or, don't buy life insurance, they're ignorant and they haven't studied the issues. And mm-hmm. so when you really study the issues, you need to have all four of those products to have an optimal retirement. Tell me a little bit about how you balance. Is there a way that you balance work life with, with your travel? I'm Just from a personal standpoint, I've been doing a lot of traveling lately myself, some personal, some business, but how do you balance all of that? I mean, you're, you're talking about in your story, you traveled something like 13 days in a row, or maybe it was this last two weeks, but how yeah. do you balance the, the personal with all the travel you do? Well, I don't know that you can really, I think a lot of that balance is a myth. Um, okay. I think you can balance balance over your lifetime. I watched a lot of advisors fail in this business because they tried to live a balanced life and, you know, their spouse didn't want them to work nights and weekends. And mm-hmm. so then they failed. And and I, what I say is, look, if you really want to be good, it's going to take some sacrifice. Right. You, you can't live this perfect, balanced life and be a top producer. It, it, you know, once you're a top producer, maybe you can, but to mm-hmm. get there, you really can't. You've got to give it everything you got. You know, so we balance our family. Number one, my wife is really good at running everything. So she runs everything and I and I make the money. That's That was the deal we made a long time ago. Right. And then we take three weeks off in the summer. We take three weeks off in the winter. We take fall break, spring break. So, I mean, what I take off when the kids are off, but when they're in school, you don't see them anyway, and I'm out working. And so that's kind of the way we do it. And it's worked out okay for us. It wouldn't work for a lot of people, but it's worked out fine for us. But I do think just like a good doctor for two or three years has to sacrifice everything when they're in residency and they're working 20 hour days. Our business is no different. If you want to be a top producer, you got to do some sacrifice. Absolutely. Tom, back to, uh, $5 $5 million for every 50000 in income. Let's say one of the people listening to this podcast, a few of our listeners, set an appointment with a client who's making $100,000 a year. And let's simplify it as possible. They need $10 million. You know, obviously, only 2% of term policies are actually paid out on. So how would you recommend just off the cuff? Now, I know every single situation is different, but for our listeners, how would you recommend a mix of term and permanent insurance? on that $10 million. It it is different for every person. You know, you want to have enough permanent that the person can afford it and put money in there. But if you big, if you build too big of a permanent policy, you can set them up for failure too, because if they have any blip in the road and we all know there's blips in the road, they could end up losing those policies. So you don't want the premium so large that they just physically cannot do it. Right. But you want it, you want it large enough that they can put a good chunk of money away have good coverage for for the for their entire lives, and then use term to supplement while the kids are little and and they need even more. So, sort of the strategy that I do that I'm doing for myself is I have a very very large term policy and a semi large whole life, and the plan is to eventually convert some of that as we go. Would you recommend something like that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a you know you can you can grow into this stuff. You're a new life and financial services guy or girl you're just getting into business what what advice would you have for those guys that are just getting into it and i think i know what you're going to say but i'm trying to reach our 250,000 listeners that are insurance agents a lot of them have producers in their office or maybe listening to this podcast and really need to get into the life insurance and financial services side what advice would you have for them tom you know, you've got to spend some time. You, I saw this on LinkedIn. It said, pros have coaches, amateurs don't. I mean, think about that. The best athletes in the world, they all got coaches. Many of them multiple coaches. They, they do training every single day. Sometimes they do doubles. Sometimes they do triples. You know, why do we think in this business, we don't need daily training and coaching? I think we do. And, and so, you know, one of the things I did is I put together an online training and coaching system. And I'm not trying to pump that here, but I mean, I do have that on my website. But whether you use me or you use somebody else, learn from some of the best people out there that have spent 20, 30, 40 years in this industry. They know a few things. You can pick up some things from them. You know, I I always go back to when I was a brand new agent. 
I was brand new agent. I was recruited by MetLife. I, I was a company commander in the army out of Fort Ord. And I said, okay, I'm going to Met, but I didn't want to stay in California. I moved to Arizona. I didn't know one single person. I didn't know anything about anything. And I made MDRT my first year. I led my office in production every year. Now, how do you do that if you don't know nothing about nothing about nothing? Is because every morning I woke up and I watched VHS tapes of the Kinder Brothers. I learned their words, their language, their stories. While I was driving around Phoenix, delivering policies and unemployments, I listened to audio books of the top producers in this industry. I learned from the best and they fast tracked me right to the top. And that's what I try to do with people. I try to fast track people to the top, but, but there are other people out there. You know, I, I, I don't have a monopoly in this. And so, you know, learn from somebody and get their systems and work them. That's what I would advise. Tom, before we run, I want to, I want to know for these guys listening, what is your web address? If they, if they want to come find you, if they want to maybe speak to you or be a part of some of your training, where do they go on the internet to find that? Pretty easy. TomHagna.com. Just go to TomHagna.com. My newsletter is free. I would encourage them to sign up for that because I try to give great ideas. I've got online training and coaching. You'll be able to find it right on the site. I've got products. I've got audiobooks, DVDs. So, I mean, I can I can definitely help people. But, you know, I've got Marv Feldman's book on my website, too, Man on a Mission. There are, there are other great tools out there. Mm-hmm. You know, join NAFA. Be a part of the industry. And, and that's what I would recommend. I really, really appreciate you being here today. I, I love I loved this podcast. It's an area that I'm weak in and that I need to improve in, and I always enjoy hearing you speak. Guys, if you ever have a chance to go hear Tom at one of his seminars or something that he puts on out there, you really need to make an effort to go do that. He is a dynamic speaker. I'm telling you this from experience because I've listened to him. I've heard him. I've bought his books. You need to go hear him, and you need to go to TomHegna.com if you're struggling in life and financial services and you need a coach or you just need some motivation. Go find him. Go go follow him. And, Tom, again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. I really appreciate it. Yep. Thank okay. you, guys. I appreciate it. Well, guys, I'm going to shut this one down today. Thank you so much for listening to all of our podcast listeners. Share this with a friend. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe. Subscribe. Tell us how wonderful we are or how horrible we are, but we're not going anywhere, whichever way you go with that. And remember what I always say. Do not sit in the office and aggressively wait for the phone to ring. You need to go earn money for your family. You need to go write good insurance for the agency that you represent, and you need to write good insurance for the companies that you represent. Guys, I hope you have a great week. We love you. We will see you next week on the Insurance Guys Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Insurance Guys Podcast. If you need to know more about me or you need to get in touch with Scott, you can always reach me at theinsuranceguyonline.com or email me at iprotectins at gmail.com. And if you need to get in touch with Mr. Bradley Flowers, go to bradleyflowersinsurance.com or email him at bradley at sarahlandinsurance.com. Guys, we love you. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to being with you again real soon on the next episode of the Insurance Guys. Take care.